All right, this is John Klubnik. This is our weekly webinar, Lunch and Learn, on um, five things I've got to enter on every call. And um, we'll spend about 15 minutes on this. And the reason we do this, a lot of times we get folks will call, and, and sure enough, they say, you know what, I'm spending all my time mentoring stuff in ACT, and they go back to their old notebook. And mm -hmm. um, they'll write stuff down, they'll use Outlook, they'll use other things because they think or they say that ACT takes too much time. Now, another problem that we have is we might see somebody that, uh, or a company rolls this out to a, a group of people, and we have a hope of getting reports out of out of ACT about what's been going on. And the problem is everybody enters stuff their own way. And so when you do that, when you run the report, it's garbage in, garbage out, and the reports mean nothing because um, everybody's been doing stuff their own way and we report on it one way and they do it another way. So what I want to talk about is how to enter data so that it's consistent and so that, that it takes no more than about two minutes to fill out basic information. And um, so here's what I do. Number one, step one is to fill out your buckets. And I'll talk about those buckets in ACT are um, fields at the top. Um, and we do that after we've looked up their name. So, so step one actually is looking, up, looking them up in ACT and adding them if necessary. Step two is to fill out the buckets, which are the fields at the top. Step three is going to be um, to fill out notes for background information or inter-team communication. Step four is to fill out a history and, and a follow-up. And then step five is to record an opportunity if necessary. And then repeat if necessary after that. And that's really all you should have to do. So typically what I do with this is we, we go through a little exercise. And we'll say, hey, let's say that so-and-so calls today. And how do I find them? How do I see if they're already in the database? That's going to be step one. And let me just pick somebody from our database. And I'm in the demo database just to kind of keep it nice and simple. But let's play with um, Susie today, OK? And then pretend I haven't found her yet. So we'll do look up and all contacts and so so here I am sitting in my office and I'm you know working in ACT, all of a sudden Susie calls and she goes, This is Susie and I go, Oh boy, Susie who? And maybe I can't even spell Susie. But in in the contact bar on the left I'm typing in part of her name. And if you type S U Z you get Susie. If you just type in S U, you know, you might get Susie and Susan and different things, but you see that took me right to the record. Step one is to find the person. If you can't find the person, you can add the person. So instead of Susie Lee calling, maybe it was um, Susan Baker. And now we do a look on Susan. There is no Susan Baker. So the second part of step one would be to add this new person. We'd go to contact and new contact. Type in the new person's name. Give it a company if you choose to. And, and this leads us into step two. So step two is to fill out my buckets. Now, a lot of times what people do when they're using ACT is they will journal, meaning they will go and, and hit the note button once they find or add the record. And within the note, they talk about what they talked about. I talked to Susan Baker. She works for ABC Company. She only works half a day on Fridays. They might purchase from us sometime next summer. It's going to be a big deal, about $50,000, and I should call her next week. And they write that in and they journal. And at the end of the week, they've got a page and a half or a book and a half of these journal entries. The problem with doing that is they're hard to find. They're hard to find and um, they're not searchable. And so rather than journaling, here's what I'm going to have you do. Buckets are fields that we want to fill out about, about the person. And um, you can add fields to the database, and we've got another webinar on customizing ACT. But you see what I did here is I colored in green the fields that I want my team to fill out on every single call. For example, I'd like them to you know, put in the, the contact name, the mobile number, the email address, what happened during the call, and an address. And maybe you want to add a few more things like a status or referred by. So real quick, I'm going to show you how I colored the fields. I just go to Tools, Design Layouts, hit Contact. And remember, whatever you do here is going to affect the rest of your team. So if you work with a team of a lot of folks, I would be careful about doing this or run this 
past somebody else, but I'm going to go to the properties window. And basically, I'm going to click on the ID status field and see I'm changing it from white to spring green. Maybe I want to also find out how they heard about somebody, and I'm going to change that also from white to spring green. Now, there's an option to make these things required. I generally don't try to make things required just because I'd rather have them try to fill out as much as possible but not get hindered by the fact that they can't leave a record. If it's required and maybe make email address required, if you don't know their email address, you either have to put in something bogus or it doesn't mean anything. So I, I don't make fields required, I just color code them. But in doing this, what we want to make sure and do, if I'm the salesperson, is I want to make sure that we enter the information. So for Susan, I'm, I'm, I'm a salesperson. I'm thinking as I talk to her, I've got to fill out these fields. I fill out these buckets. So I might put in her mobile number. I might put in her email address. I might put on, you know, just a result. And this isn't tied to the histories or the notes, but, um, you know, it might be, you know, called about proposal. It's just the last milestone, typically. We'll put in the address, and I probably should have put city, state, zip, but you get the picture. But then I have ID status, which is you know, what type of relationship this is or where they are in our pipeline. So I might just say this is a lead and how they hear about us and they heard about us from a customer referral. Those are my buckets. And, and as you're having a conversation with somebody, I want you to, to think through what bits of information do I wish that I had taken a year from now? What bits of information am I going to need to do marketing with somebody? So you might add fields for um, industry, for product type, for hot, warm, cold, for things like that. And then once you've added those fields, those become your buckets, and those are the things that we train our sales team to enter every single time. Beyond that, we, we, we can put background information in notes, we can record the phone call in histories and so on, but information about the person and we think about what do I wish I knew about them? What information is consistent across several? What, how do I want to market to people is another way I would look at this. And then what do I wish I'd asked a year from now? You know, if you're trying to build an email campaign or, or one of your options is to do an email marketing campaign, you always obviously are going to wish that you had taken their email address six months from now when you don't really remember who this person was. So that's your, that's your buckets, and, and we want to fill those out on every single time. And, and during the phone call, you think in terms of buckets. You, you word the phone call, you organize that phone call so that you can fill out this information and have it for later. And um, so that, that's our first step. So we filled out our buckets. That's step, step two. First, we did look up or add. Second, we filled out our buckets. The third, let's talk about these tabs at the bottom. Notes, histories, activities, opportunities. Notes now, instead of a place for my phone call results, now are a place for background information. So you might say, you know, friends with her husband, works half a day on Fridays. You know, nothing about what we talked about, these should be very short. But background information goes into notes. Now, if you're talking about the phone call, that's history. And there's a history tab, and there's also a history button. So the history button is going to record a history. And here I want to record the fact that Susan just called me. So I'll hit the, the type, and I'm going to put phone call. Phone call was received. And I want to say, you know, called about proposal, or called about, you know, new product. Now when I do this, this is going to go to my histories. I've got an option here if I'd like to to schedule an activity. So I could click on follow up and maybe our follow up step for this person when she called was that we'd follow up next Thursday with a lunch appointment. So I'll hit the drop down, change it to Thursday the 2nd, change the phone call to meeting. I can say let's go from you know 11 to 12, and we're going to call this lunch appointment or lunch meeting. 
Now that's one way to schedule a follow-up. I'll show you another one in just a second. I click OK, I click OK, and so here under history you see I recorded the current phone call. Also up at the top under my latest activities you see that the, the last phone call received is marked with today's date. And that's another advantage of using a phone call over a note. When I record a phone call it triggers the field for last received date and so I could actually run a query that says show me everybody that you've talked to today. Here's how you do that. Just right click, look up, last reach equals to today, and there's a list of everybody that has a history of a, of a, of a phone call received for today. So it's really easy to do. So notes, background information, histories is where we record our phone calls. Any business communication, phone calls, meetings, emails, um, to-dos, all of those are histories, not notes. Big change in the way a lot of folks do this. A lot of folks will enter notes, and that's all they do. And you just lose a lot of reportability if you do that. So it, it's going to be important that we um, are consistent. So if half the team is using notes and half the team is using history, when you run your report, you're going to have to either run two different reports or – the history report is going to be blank for half the team. Neither one is good, so it's important to have consistent data entry. Okay, so the follow-ups, remember we scheduled a follow-up from the history there, and so it, it's there. If you wanted to schedule a follow-up straight from the activity tab, um, you can do that here. Let's say I wanted to do a meeting two weeks later. I could certainly do that. For a demonstration. There's more ways to, to do scheduling. We'll talk about those on another call, but that's that's what I use the activity tab for. Now, if during our conversation with Susan um, we uncover a deal, that's my last thing I want to enter here. So a deal is an opportunity. An opportunity, we click on the opportunities tab and there's a button here for new opportunity. I can click on that. And that takes me to the opportunity view, which can also be customized. And in this view, I can, you know, list what my what my deal is. Super widget project, put a status, put a stage. If you want to add some products to it or, or add a price to it, there's a products and service tab. And so I can add different items here and then these will pull off of a, of a product sheet. Um, if you do a lot of, if you've got a lot of products or you do a lot of quoting, we've got another tool called QuoteWorks that we work with and recommend for that. But for just a simple opportunity, um, that's a good place to do it. Here you can see that the total amounts that came from the total of the products is listed here. And then also under, under contacts, you see it linked the opportunity called Super Widget Project to Susan Baker, the contact I added. So if I click back, I can see I'm back at Susan's record. If I and then I can look at my opportunities tab and double click, and I can see the opportunity. So if there was more than one opportunity, I could play leapfrog between the two. So that's it. That's what we want to record on every single call. We want to number one find the record. Number two, um, fill out our buckets or the fields at the top. Number three, do our notes. Number four, our history and follow-up, and number five, record our activities. So I'll stop the recording. This is John Klubnik. Hope you use a lot of ACT. Bye-bye.